Good morning. We are on the way down to a neighbor for a bit of a special Sunday morning job here. Um, we're going to help Keith, who owns the llamas that you've seen in some of the videos. They're actually Keith llamas. We're going to help him get some new Wi-Fi upgrades going on his farm with a bunch of gear that I got sent. So this is going to be a bit of a special day, but yeah, a lot to come. Stay tuned. All right, we parked out in front of the keys. Uh, first, let me just show you what we're doing. So, there's a whole bunch of network stuff that was sent by Powertech, which is a company in Queensland. Thank you, Powertech. Um, and they sent this brand that I don't even know how to pronounce. Ruji Rei. I think it's Ruji Rei, I'm guessing. Um, let me know in the comments how you would phonetically spell it. I don't know. Um, but there's a whole bunch of stuff here that we're going to install today. So first of all, there's a six port gigabit switch. Um, this is, uh, it's got PoE in it so we can power the various things that we're going to set up. Um, I'll show you more about all these things as we go through today. Um, that is a ceiling mounted indoor Wi-Fi access point, Wi-Fi 6 here. Um, we're actually not going to install on the ceiling for various reasons, but I'll get to that as well. Um, so that is obviously gonna plug in to this, and that's gonna be in the main house um, near where the internet connection is. Now, I know, cause I have YouTube stats, that 80% of you watching are not subscribed. So um, if you do like this content, please do subscribe and you can be part of the cool 20%. Anyway, um, okay. Then there is a wireless bridge, and this is kind of cool. So I have a couple of these from Unify on my farm, um, but this one, and again, we'll get to all of this in much more detail. There's two, um, uh, not access points, where are they? Devices, bridges, things, um, which apparently are prepared. So I've been promised that these are just a matter of hooking up and off you go. So this is like a wireless bridge, so like having cable without the cable. So we'll see how that goes. That's gonna go from the main house up to a shed up the hill um, so that we have connection in that shed. And then, here's the big daddy. Hang on. We're gonna put this wireless access point, outdoor access point, look at this thing. I thought there was more than one thing in this box when I got it, but no. This is just one single access point. Um, also Wi-Fi 6, uh, outdoor rate obviously, so we're going to install that on the outside of that shed and then it's going to cover the hill and the rest of the area, I think. Apparently it has very, very good coverage, but we're going to test that and see if that's true. Um, so that's the plan, um, but yeah, thanks Powertech, because that's a lot of gear uh, and we're going to give Keith an upgrade in his beard or something, I don't know. But next... Um, yeah, let's install the switch and we'll try and connect to the internet. All right, so we are in Keith's kitchen-ish thing now. So that down here is the actual internet connection. That's the NBN, it's called in Australia, the National Broadband Network. And that connects to a satellite the size of a small country that is in geosynchronous orbit around the Earth. Um, that is the government solution for internet in rural Australia. And that has obviously the old school bunny ear Wi-Fi router thing here that we're going to replace and we're going to replace it with these two things to start with. So I've got this switch which is a four port PoE plus switch which is great um, because most things that run PoE is PoE plus or plus plus. I'm not sure what the difference is actually. So this is a Rui Rei did I get that right? Uh, RGES 206GC-P which is the number I'm assuming. Um, now it has six ports on it because it has two uplinks. So I don't know if you can connect two internet connections to it, but that's kind of handy. And then obviously four ports, which are combined power budget of 54 watts, which is decent for four ports. Um, so I'm gonna use that to put somewhere down here. And then that is gonna connect, obviously there's a power supply and whatnot in here as well. But we're going to put that up on the wall. Um, I think this is a layer two switch, but I could be wrong. It might be layer three. Um, in any case, I'll put the stats right here so you can read them. Hey. Um, and that is then going to be sort of the hub 
for all of our internet that we're going to put up today, all, all the connections. And we're going to use this Wi-Fi 6 access point. So this is the Rui Rei Wi-Fi 6 ceiling mount access point, which we're going to put on the wall. <laughs> um, it, it feels kind of sturdy, actually. It feels quite nice. It has two ports in here. So there's one, whoops, it goes that way. Uh, one for PoE, which is what we're going to power it with from the switch. And then there's a second LAN out. So we can actually power a second thing from it or give data to a second thing. It won't power it, let's be clear, um, which is neat. So I'm going to put that about here as well on the wall. And the reason that we've got to put it on the wall is what's commonly known as the WAF. I learned about this term, the wife acceptance factor. And for many, many complicated reasons, that must be adhered to at all times. So that's why we're going to put it on here. And it does say, this. the, the specs on this say it has an omnidirectional antenna. So it might be all right on the wall, but let's see. Um, it is a two by two MIMO antenna, so it can hold two connections at the same time. It runs on 2.415 gigahertz. Um, does not do Wi-Fi 6E, but again, hardly any devices uses that anyway. Um, if you want to know what Wi-Fi 6E is, I have a video linked there. Um, so we're going to put that up, we're going to connect that to the switch, we're going to adopt it all in the app, the Rui uh, app on the phone, and then we're going to set up a Wi-Fi network to start with, and then after that we're going to connect all the other things that I showed you before. So here's a trick, if you want to know if you want to mount you know, screw holes, you put a bit of masking tape on here. We're going to punch these, somehow mark them. Oh, thanks, Keith. So where the holes are, just give it a little eh. Same on the other side. And then we can take this tape off. Maybe. Come on. Like that. And then we can put that on the wall where we want to place the, the switch. Like say there, roughly, and then the screw holes are going to be exactly the right distance apart, and we can just hang it. Um, that's how I'll install. I'll do a bit of cable management later on. This thing is a little bit wonky on the wall as well, but it'll be alright. Um, we can fix that too. But now the switch is on there. The access point is on the wall. So next, let's use the app uh, on the phone to adopt it all and make it work. Hopefully. Okay, so um, next step is to use the Ruji. Ruji, I'm going to mess that up so many times. The Ruji app to adopt this access point, which is now flashing green. I'm assuming that means I'm ready to go on the internet or something, which is connected to the switch. So let's do that. So open up the Ruji Regi network app. And um, the whole idea of this is that you don't have a physical network controller or something that you have to install. So I always compare to Unify because I know that. Unify, you have a dream machine or you have a cloud key or you have something that controls your network. You don't have to do that with Ruji Ray. It has the app and everything is, is controlled from their cloud. So, which will always be free, by the way. There's no monthly fees or anything. Um, so I'm going to add a new project and we'll see how that goes. So we're going to add a project. Oh, we're going to create an account. All right. Let's create an account first. How's it going to do that? Because I don't have internet connection here. We are literally in the middle of nowhere. So how am I going to create an account when I don't have internet connection? Did you think of that one, Roji, Reji, Rei? Probably not. Okay, I've now created an account. What we had to do was actually set up the old access point 
and create an account that way because you can't create an account without an internet connection which there isn't because we took it off to put up the new and there's no mobile connection but I have an account now so let's try and set it up so there's already a demo project on here I'm not going to use that obviously that's just if you want to install the app and you want to play with something and see how it works you can use that demo project without having any devices so you know go ahead and do that if you want to I'm going to add a new project have raised a piece yes I do we're going to connect to Wi-Fi ah so if you don't have an access point and you want to set up a switch you can scan the QR code on it that's kind of neat so there's two options but I'm just going to use the access point because we have that uh, yep allowed to access the location uh, finish cable connections power on all devices wait for three minutes after Wi-Fi is sent a self-organizer network is completed okay I've, it's been way more than three minutes that's flashing green I'm assuming when we first plugged it in you might have noticed on the before it flashed really fast like like really you know green that might have been when it was setting up its self-organized network but anyway we'll keep going okay connect to that Wi-Fi which we do have I saw that before so Ruji S13 F6 I'm gonna to connect to that okay I'm just gonna go back to it so um, okay so that's connect to that and oh <laughs> and then it went to the screen now <laughs> which I've already connected to saved no internet access obtaining IP address okay come on is there only one AP in your network uh, yes there's only one access point which is there we're gonna add the outdoor one later and see how that works when you add another device to it but for now yes there's only one access point so it's going to generate a topology showing us what's connected to what wrong Wi-Fi connection please connect to the Wi-Fi of Ray device I did check the cable check whether the device has been configured it has okay connect to it again All right, I am returning with success, sort of. So um, <laughs> what I had to do, and it's still connected, is that I have to plug in the old, you can't see it, but it's down here. Eh, there's the old internet access point, a Wi-Fi router. Plug that in and then have a cable into the switch from that so I would have both SSIDs. The one from the access point and the one from the Wi-Fi router thing, right? And then I had to scan the barcode, which you saw before as well. I can scan the barcode on the switch, adopt that into my account offline or not through the access point. And then I waited, I don't know, five minutes or so, and then they showed up. So now I have the two devices on here. Um, now I have a theory of why that didn't work before with the Wi-Fi network because I was on the right Wi-Fi network I did do all the things right. I did whatever the app said. I think it has to do with the NBN connection for the geosynchronous satellite. I am wondering if the latency of 600 millisecond ping is too much for the system to get a reply whatever it needs to do in in you know a timely manner uh, I don't have any evidence of that but that's my theory but in any case we are now cooking so let's have a look at the app shall we I'm gonna leave all this in and then I will disconnect it afterwards and we'll continue installing but let's just have a look at the project app so I've created a new project for um, this access point and that switch and as you can see I'm here online devices 2 um, I can then, I'm assuming, click on each one so I can see the switch here. It's going to load up the switch. So here's the IP address of it on the local network. Uh, there's a MAC address, etc. Oh, you can see the ports. That's kind of neat. This is very, I like this. Um, so you can see the uplink port. Obviously, that's the one where we plugged in the internet. Um, that is the uh, the number five, sorry, which it says on here it says uh, uplink. And there's five port five and six are uplinks and then port one is you can see a little poe icon and that's for that yeah and then of course you can see all the other ports on here as well so if, when we hook up more things because we're going to have another thing we're going to have those point to point bridge devices uh, hooked in as well we should be able to see that here too um, and you can see uh, we have a hundred megabit copper 
uh, connection into it. So I guess that's what the NBN modem supplies. Fair enough. Uh, POU power, which you do want to keep an eye on usually. Um, the power um, um, budget for your switch can get important. In this case, we are fine. 4.8 out of 42 will be fine. There's no problem. But of course, I can reboot. I can configure it as well. Let's go to the config. I can do a cable test, VLAN settings. So I can set up, can I set up more than one VLAN? Are you sure you want to switch to managed mode? All ports will become access ports. No, I'm not going to do that, but that's good. There's a managed mode for the switch, so you can have more control of it. That's neat. This is, this is good. I like this. Um, long distance transmission. What does that do? After long distance data transmission is enabled, the transmission and speed of port will change to full duplex 10 megabit. Oh, okay. So if you have a really long cable, 250 meters, it says up to, you can change it so that it becomes more stable, I guess. I'm not too sure what that does other than changing it to 10 megabit. Uh, cable test. Do we want to do a cable test? This is kind of neat. There's a lot of good things here. Um, okay, let's go back and we'll have a look at the access point as well. So the access point, which is that Wi-Fi 6 access point on the wall here, uh, model RAP2260. Um, has an IP address, MAC address, etc. Uh, eWeb. What is eWeb? Can I monitor it? creating eWeb? Please tap open to open the eWeb system or copy to visit the system by browser. Oh, okay, so it's it's a browser-based access. Very good. I don't need to open that because I've got everything here. Copy. Cool. And there's a, you can see down there, there's a unique link to manage it. Oh, that's neat. Very good. Uh, reboot it, obviously reboot. Locate. I'm assuming that's going to flash the green light. Let's see. Hey, flashy, flashy. Very good. So if you, don't, if you have many of them, you can locate each of them. Pretty common. Uh, monitor, we can see what we got here. Memory usage, CPU usage, flash usage. Okay, if that's your thing, you can go and look at that. Um, and we can remove it. And of course you can monitor, uh, you can change the channels and the power. Uh, I usually leave these on auto because these systems, like these sort of higher end prosumer systems will figure this out themselves. It's all auto configured and managed. So um, you can change the channel width, you can change the power output for the antenna but I tend to not fiddle too much with it because you don't have to, um, but you can. And then there's a config as well, radio configuration. I'm assuming that is the bands. Yeah. So here you can change the, all the power and everything um, for the antennas. Again, as I just said, I don't tend to fiddle with that. All right. So it took a little bit and I think the problem was probably the internet connection. Um, but we got there and I managed it and we now have a project and now we shall add more things. So next, whole bunch of cabling and we're going to set up the bridge devices so we can get a wireless bridge up to the shed up the hill. All right, so wireless bridge. Let me just first show you what's in the box, all right? So this is a, well, as it says, 5 gig has wireless bridge. So the idea with this is that you have, um, where well, you can't do cabling, or don't want to, you can set up these wireless bridges that go between, you know, up to five kilometers. We're gonna use it for about 30 meters, but anyway. <laughs> um, so it comes with two of these um, devices here, the bridges, the wireless bridges, and they are prepared. So they should just be connected and then they should just work. That's the thought anyway. Um, they can be PoE powered here with the LAN PoE but that's 24 volt passive PoE, which that PoE switch does not do. So that's why we have these PoE injectors or adapters that we're gonna use instead. So that's how we're gonna power it. Obviously we're gonna drag a cable from the switch to the LAN here, but it won't be PoE powered. We'll just do it for data. So when you've done that, we then put the other one up on the shed um, and connecting those two somehow, there's many different connecting mounts here, uh, ways you can do it. Then we have connection up the hill in the shed and then we can attach the outdoor access point. But this is the idea for now. So let's first do a whole bunch of cabling and install these. Okay, so the thought is just on the other side of this wall is where we install the switch and the access point. The access point is just next to that window right there. So we're gonna drag a cable through the floor, it comes out here, there's already is a cable for the internet connection. So we're gonna try and use the same hole if we can. 
We're then gonna put a, a cable up all the way up here. Uh, we don't have the right conduit yet, so you're gonna see it just hanging, but conduit is coming later. And then it's gonna go all the way along the house, all the way, let me just zoom in for you, all the way to down there, eh? finger, uh, there, right on the eave, right at the end, and then up to that um, shed, you can see just in the background with the yellow color there. So that's the idea. We're gonna drag cable all the way there and then get connection up that way. Hmm. I just want to show you the um, mechanism for mounting these um, direct links. It's really neat. Um, so obviously you have the, there's a bit of a windy bit here, you know, there's a thread there. So you have these things, which make sure that you can move it and you put this windy bit over it. There we go. So then obviously you can position this to where you think you want it. And then when you're happy, that's when you tighten it up and it sits really firm. And then this wall mount, which goes on the wall, or we're gonna put it on a post, as you'll see in a minute. That just puts there, and you put a screw in through it, and that's it. Obviously, you put that on first, not this, but you know. And that's it, and you can position it almost wherever you want. It's really neat, so um, let's do that. Okay, so we've got, here's one wireless bridge set up and that points up at that wireless bridge there. So we've got those two hooked up. So let me just walk you in here. So yeah, the distance is not far. It's probably about 20 meters, 25 meters, but it's almost impossible to do cabling in that distance. So they are very, very useful. So from there to, oh, there's the sun. Hello, sun. There. All right. So let's try and set them up. All right. So we got the two wireless bridges hooked up. There's one here. There's one over there, as you saw. Um, so let's go into the Ruji Ray app, and I'm going to try and adopt them. And then I'm going to go into our project. There we go. And then I'm going to try and add it. Okay. So I'm in the project, and you just touch up here, and I'm you know the the menu pops up and you can click add device and we'll see what we get scan um, okay I'm gonna try and scan this let's have a look all right so we scan that wireless bridge that's correct yep all right name so we're gonna call this um, bridge can we have a, we probably can't we'll just call bridge house and the other one will be Bridge shed, I guess that makes sense. All right. Okay, so we're trying to add that. Uh, yeah, that's the that's the device. We're going to continue to add that. Oh no, I don't want to add another one. They should just be paired, shouldn't they? Scan the Ray device or event QR code. Okay. Yeah. All right. Click OK. The device is already added. 
Okay, well, why didn't you show me then? Oh, maybe I have to update here. Let's have a look. Ah, there we go. My bad. All right, so we have the zero of one. Okay, let's have a look at the bridge. Fail to view the details. No wireless bridges online. Okay, I think I might just have to go and add the other one. So just bear with me as, with for a sec. And I'll go and add that one. It's just over here. All right, so then we're gonna call this one bridge shed. Okay. Yeah, that's the one. So now we got both bridges in. And we'll see what it picks up. Zero for two, okay. Now these are supposed to be prepared. All right, um, yeah, it's about, I don't know, five minutes later or something. And as you can see, now they show online. Um, so the bridge, apparently I plugged it in and I added them into the cloud side of the app because you can also go local if you're on site. Um, so it connects locally rather than via the cloud. I added them via the cloud and then suddenly they were here, like after a few minutes. So they probably had to configure themselves is what I'm guessing. And now it seems to be fine. So if I go into two of two online here and I look at the stats, I can see, let's have a look here. So you can see it's, it's on the cloud. So this is the, at the top there. Um, stat is normal, while it's bridges two, we have bridge shed, which is over there. We had bridge house, which is there. Um, and negotiation speed is 360 megabit, um, which seems decent. You know, the internet connection here is nowhere near that fast. So um, that seems to be working just fine. Um, so yeah, I guess patience was the key in this case. I did add them correctly, just like you saw, and they just appeared after a little bit, so they configure themselves. And they are prepared. They do just communicate to each other. I have not told anyone in any app that those two are together. They're going out. No, they just, they are prepared. So that works pretty well. Um, yeah, there's a safety thing here. Please configure the bridging password because it's probably the default, I would imagine. I haven't actually used the bridging password. Um, so let's go, we can view more. What does that do? Bridge shed, so that's the one over there. All right, so we have tap to configure the bridge shed. All right, well, we don't need to do that just yet because the last part of this journey is that huge access point, the outdoor one, which we are going to connect to the data part of, um, of that other wireless bridge, right? That's how we're gonna get the data connection to it. So we have excellent ping latency, zero millisecond. They are pretty close. So yeah, okay. Um, negotiation, uh, 360 megabit, uptime 8.3 minutes. Well, they can use, you can see there that it's only been eight minutes since they started working. So yeah, I just had to wait. Um, yeah, at most 48 two megapixel cameras can be connected at the same time. <laughs> 48. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, very good. Well, the wireless bridge is working. It's up and running. It's connected. So now let's move on to the last bit, which is that huge outdoor access point. All right. It's time to have a look at this monster. <laughs> All right. So this is the box that came in, as I showed you earlier. This is the outdoor Wi-Fi 6 access point, um, and it is that big. Like, look at, like my head is half the size almost. It is very, very large. Um, so this is a dual band again. It's a two by two um, M, you know, MU MIMO. Um, ooh, nice. Um, this is powered by 53.5 volts at 320 milliamps. That's a lot of power going into this bad boy. Um, it's IP54 rated, I believe. IP68 rated rather, sorry. The wireless bridges are IP54. So this can take everything outside basically. IP68 um, is, you know, it, it, any kind of dust, I think it's even submersion almost, but dust and water is not gonna get into this bad boy. Um, so you power this with PoE, which goes into this very nice gland here. So you take that out. And 
in there. We plug that in, so that's going to come from the PoE adapter that we uh, that I've set up. So I'll show that in a second. And this gland here is just yeah, this is top notch. This is very good. There's nothing's going to come in here. And then if you wanted to, you can also power this one with SFP. So this is the um, I don't have. I can't open that. But if you had a uh, optic. Uh, connection that would go in there fiber optic i believe sfp connection um so we're actually going to mount it like this so we can turn it this way um because that's what keith wants and this apparently i was told by powertech has range of like 500 meters so we're going to test that but first let's put this up on the shed I'm very impressed. I don't say this lightly, but the bracket is solid. This feels really solid. It's quite easy to set up. Everything fits really nicely together. Um, yeah, it, it, it's good start, absolutely. Um, I'm now connected directly to it, to its Wi-Fi access point that it's um, um, transmitting. So I'm going to try and add it now into uh, our project. And by the way, uh, because this is connected to the PoE uh, adapter which is connected to the wireless bridge we have internet on it as well even though we're connected directly to it so it has internet connection already and so far I have nothing but the strongest signal like I haven't been able to anyway we're gonna do a test in a minute let me just do this first so let's add a device and again we're gonna do it with the QR code which is on the back here somewhere I'm hoping there it is like that okay yep yeah, that's the right model so we're going to call this one shed ap because it's in the shed right shed access point um okay oh the name cannot connect contain spaces i always forget that there we go shed ap continue to add yep yeah, we want to add that all right great so and as i learned before it seems like now i just have to have a little bit of patience for it to be added into the access point i'm assuming it's going to come Oh, it should be on the wireless, under the wireless bridge, shouldn't it? Oh, no, there it is. Okay. So it's seen it, but it's still not online. So I'm assuming that because Rei, Ruji Rei, <laughs> Ruji, yeah, there you go. I knew I would mess up the name again. Um, has their uh, network controller in the cloud. This now has to talk to the cloud and get configured to be part of that project and part of this uh, well, farm, I guess. So I'm just gonna have to refresh it a couple of times once in a while here, and then eventually it will probably come up as online. That would be my expectation. Um, so, yep, well, um, we'll cut to that bit where it's online. Okay, it's in. It just took 10 minutes and it configured itself. And now it has a solid blue light on it. So I guess that means it's ready to go because it was flashing blue before. Let's have a look at it and see if it's part of our Wi-Fi for the farm. Yeah, SSID, Greybeard's Llama Lair, absolutely fantastic. Am I actually on that? I am, I am on that Wi-Fi. Okay, so much like the other access point, I would assume, because they're both access points, um, I can do eWeb, reboot, locate, monitor, remove. Um, I can see how many clients on it, that would just be me. I'm assuming, yeah, pixel eyes, that's me. And then again, I can adjust the channels. Uh, I'm not going to do that on this either. Uh, I, t I do tend to leave these alone, um, but I think we're good to go. And yes, in case you noticed, we did mount this sideways because Keith, normally you, well, not normally, but it's meant for mounting it so it tilts up and down. Keith wanted it to be that way. So we move it that way um, because most of the farm is that way. So that's why it's mounted sideways, which I'm sure will work just fine, just like we mounted the other access point on the wall. Yeah, um, cool. So we now have two access points, two wireless bridges and a switch all hooked up. We have one Wi-Fi network. And now 
I'm gonna walk up the hill and see how far away I can get and still get signal from this. So um, this will be fun. Come along. So I'm top of the hill, obviously. Farm is down there, you can see it in the background. And uh, how far away do you think we are from down there where we put up that massive access point? And I'm still on the Wi-Fi, bear in mind. So let's, let's try with Google Maps. All right, so I'm gonna use Google Maps to measure the distance and it is 580 meters. So over half a kilometer away from the access point and I'm still on the Wi-Fi, just, but I am still on it. Um, let's try and, and have a look at Wi-Fi Man, which I normally use with Unify, but it'll give us an idea of signal strength just up here. Um, so you can see here that I am on the Wi-Fi. I'm at minus 8281 dBm, whatever that means. I can't remember, but that's the measurement for me uh, for measuring Wi-Fi signal strength. Um, oh, just turned yellow. So let's start a speed test just to see what we get. So bear in mind, this connection here is 25 down and five up. That is the maximum speed for this NBN connection. And we're running at 23, roughly. 23.6 down and up, four, five, roughly. Which means that we have full internet speed about 580 meters away. Which if you're in America, in Imperial measurement, that's a different number. Um, yeah, this is impressive. I mean, I can't really fault the equipment. Um, there was a couple of errors, which was mostly me. Um, didn't quite understand some of the things about uh, how the internet worked with this particular setup. Um, one thing that would have been nice would just tell the user that when you adopt things, wait 10 minutes and then it'll automatically be configured and set up because I didn't have enough patience, obviously. But it just works. I set it up and it literally just works. I'm, I'm quite impressed. This is, a, this is a good thing. And now Keith has square kilometers of Wi-Fi. Hmm. So if you like videos like this um, and you are in that 80% that's not subscribed, please subscribe and then you can get more videos like this. Uh, other than that, put any questions in the comment. Yes, I know there's a lot of cable management and conduit to do just yet, but we didn't have it at the time. That's coming, I'm not gonna film that. Um, but any other comments, let me know um, if you have questions about the equipment or the brand, and I'll see if I can answer it. Other than that, I'll see you next time.